Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So long story short, basically a while ago, I've made a procedural um, hand fan or folding fan uh, using animation nodes because I need to animate this fan. So the, how should I say? The traditional modeling is never a choice. I really need a procedural way of doing so, okay? And then I said, okay, I think geometry nodes can do this. So the Arendelle, uh, who is the um, the author of uh, 2.93 splash screen, called it, got interest on this. So he tried it himself to make these kind of things, but he used it. He uses a, a different strategy. So I think okay, um, if he does that, so let me do this using my original plan as well. So today. So tutorial is using my own strategy, which I think is actually simpler and better because it uses less nodes. But if you are interested in Arendelle's strategy, the link is provided in the description in which you can see his node tree. So let's start. So from last modeling practice, I think it's modeling practice 04, uh, we are talking about making the aperture and uh, we're instance stuff. The, here we basically uh, the reason I mentioned that after is because we're going to use the same strategy because if we are going to make a fan it must open and close and I don't really know the arc it open and close so in this case the the real thing that I'm going to do is to use the the strategy that we used last time we start with a single vertices and I'm going to the, 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 the screw modifier you take the screw modifier and the take the this take that to Y. So we have this screw, and then I'm going to shift D, duplicate the same modifier and gain to Z. So in this case, we see a very very nice effect. But I'm not going to use the screw, however, just to take that to angle. And this is the part which I don't really like. Actually, can I actually take that to X, please? Can I actually take this to negative value? Oh, this is nice. Okay, so now if I go to Z, okay, that, this is fine. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to split a view because I want to know how this actually looks. And I'm going to take the screw to this. So basically, negative 180 degrees, so I have a fan. And I do not need these screws because I just don't need that. If we go to the wireframe view, you can see it's it's very highly subdivided. I don't need this much subdivision. It's very unnecessary. So let's just take that to everything just the one. I think one is enough. Actually, another issue is that I don't need the point to be placed. So just uh, place this point to another place. Okay. Because this is a fan. It's not a. We don't need a circle mesh. Okay. So when we once we have this. I still would like to remind you is that the step function is depends on how many leaves you are having. Okay. So this is the important part. Next step is basically just to do a kind of function. So in our first uh, modeling practice, I mentioned all this kind of concept of talking about a mask and so on and so forth. The real issue that comes is that this is a circle. This is not a linear. Okay. So the previous uh, the way we were talking about the linear mask, oh, this part is the positive and this part is the negative. So we can distinguish the mask using the compare node, um, so on and so forth. But it does the, the same strategy does not work here. And I need to actually switch the jump nodes. That's why I feel kind of weird. And let's lock it. So. But this is a circle. So we today we're going to learn something, a, basically a new math function, which is called arctan. So we'll take the attribute vector math, and there will be an option which is called. Oh, it does not. <laughs> we need to take the attribute math, and there is an option which is called arctan two. Arctan two is basically calculating the degree. So I, I don't know where it starts exactly, but what it happens is that uh, you're calculating a rotation. So basically assume this is zero, then you get this is one. 
the, the actual result is based on a pi so this is might be negative pi and this is pi I don't I don't actually know the exact uh, result it gives but this is kind of idea so you take a degree okay so this is the whole point so probably this is zero I guess okay so following this principle we need to to use the architect so let's take everything into architect first you need an A and a B. What A and a B does is basically you need uh, each axis. So let's just separate X, Y, Z. Ah, separate X, Y, Z. Take the position. Take X, take Y, take Z. And then I'm going to take the, I, I don't know where to start, probably Y and X. And then we have arc. I just named it as arc because it's simpler. And then we need, because I really don't need, to, I really don't know my arc. If you really know the math, you probably know, but I don't know. So I'm going to use a kind of a chichi method. This is a really a chichi method. That I have a plane and I'm going to add the subdivision services. Uh, sub change that to subdivide or whatever stuff it does not really matter because to me it does not really looks very different I probably just subdivide you need to subdivide quite many times but the six should be sufficient enough this is just to help visualization it does not necessarily be very serious in the future so you can delete that after you use that fully I'm, I'm going to use the same node tree and then I'm going to use the point translate Take the arc, and everything just becomes so weird because this arc is too large. Here, what we do is take the firstly we need the attribute combined XYZ, and I'm taking the attribute and take the arc as arc. So now what we have is uh, we have this kind of long stuff being made. And this is exactly we can see actually so here let's just uh, I, I don't know there's too many ways that we can potentially do the, but the major point is that we need a attribute map range uh, I think uh, this must be the negative and that is the positive pi and pi so we take the range so take the arc take the arc the minimum is negative pi the positive is positive pi so this is the result we're having oh this is so nice however this is not really what we want is the whole point is that I don't want my fan to go 360 degree so I'm going to decrease this pi, uh, eliminate this pi I'm going to clamp that and taking the pi that's to zero so now you can see this arc is only affecting that region but so this is opposite to what our whole fan is modeled in this case I'm just going to revert everything so I'm going to take the pi as minimum and then zero as the maximum so now we're affecting only the this region that covers our fan so we are having this degree that's holding it and the rest of the parts that has been clamped is no longer matter no longer matters okay so this is the part that we're having next thing I want to you to ensure is that the, 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 is here we have a mask to zip from 0 to 1 because everything has been translated to until 1 so this is a place where it has been clamped And I want what I want to ensure is that without this plane, the basically I change the value to one hundred to negative one hundred eighty degree, and it should be rotating as the same that I'm manipulating the value of this maximum. Okay, so if I you realize that if I'm decreasing this maximum. It actually expands itself 
this is the same as that if I'm decreasing our angles of our fans for the second screw modifier, it's also rotating to that direction. So this is very important because you want to make sure that the two parts are synchronized to each other. So next step that we're going to do is basically I need to import this kind of value into the geometry nodes. So you can also do the opposite, for example, ex export this value to the screw modifier. It does not really matter which one you're going to do, but I think it will be easier if I control the screw modifier as the as the main, how should I say, main functions. So basically right click, copy drivers and paste the drivers, and you realize the degree has been changed into radius. So we're going to take a map range. So we all know that it starts from the zero. The zero, uh, start from zero. Okay, this is polysnow, but then it goes to negative 180 degree, negative 180, negative 180 degree means we have pi, negative means negative pi. Uh, actually, this this is zero and the negative pi. Okay. Then minimum will be the, the, the where's our minimum? The minimum will be our pi. Basically, these are two same values and the maximum will be zero. So this is what we define here. So basically you can change this screw modifier and so basically if we go to this view you can see that this arc is always elevated for one and if we try to change the negative one you can see this arc is always the maximum part is always stayed at the same level at this line it is not across which means we are actually succeed and even if you go across to 100 negative 230 is still stays at the same line which means our function is working pretty well very well and if it goes to positive it just goes to zero this is perfect okay and this is definitely in line with our plane so why do we need this because whatever we're trying to do here is creating a mask which really covers the entire region from zero to one so this one is rotating. We are making a kind of curve, but this one is also rotating as a curve. So 0 0.5 about this place in the middle. So we are, we are making a linear function on a curved surface. Next step is basically we take an attribute math. We're going to use a function which is called a module. Module I've explained in many different cases. Um, you try to change the, uh, you try to look at the Wikipedia, but the whole point is that if you if you module one, the b value is one. Then if you go, if you input a value which is one point one, then it will return zero point one. If you return to two and you input the number of zero point uh, two point one, then almost all still the zero point one. There is a it's not exactly, but you get a kind of idea. The whole point is the A value will never be larger than B value. Okay. So let's just take an example. If we take a 0.5 and look at our viewers, let's take an arc and arc, then it cuts half. As we said, 0.5 is exactly that. And if I take 0.2, then we cut that into five pieces until one. So this is what it really does. And uh, just to be aware, this is a byproduct that we're making a fan. So if we do not really clamp everything in this map range, we're really creating a fan. Okay. So here we're using going to use this kind of cut as a kind of an, a new mask. Previously, we used the mask to cover the whole range that's range from zero to one. But this time we're using modulo, we cut this uh, we cut this mask into several pieces, so we have the 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So you you do see this uh, kind of effect, right? And we're going to place this mask onto our vertices. And for some reason, you do not really see a prominent effect. You do see kind of elevation, but it's not prominent. I don't know why exactly. Um, 
because you can see the, the whole issue which causes the problem is that you see on plane it works perfectly well on our fan there is no effect they're using the same node tree which means ideally speaking they should have exactly the same effect but for some reason our fan is not being being displaced properly we're going to fix this kind of issue a little bit later uh, here firstly what i want to make sure is that um, we would like to make each cut be aligned with the amount of steps we have uh, the p basically the pieces of fan because now we make us five cuts but i have 10 leaves which is obviously is not right so to do that i'm going to still copy as new driver and uh shift d duplicate our values and paste the driver and then i'm going to take math and take that to divide and divide from one because the one is the maximum. So basically divide the base. If I have 10 leaves, then just uh, make 10 cuts using module. And now if we try to see through our entire stuff, then you can actually see for each of lines we have a cut. Uh, but even now, we still do not have a proper displacement for our fans. The another reason for this actually the real reason for this is that we need subdivision surfaces and it does not look like working but if you try to put that to previous place mm, mm, no actually it works okay so the basically it works it's just the amplitude is kind of low the, another reason is that the positive and the negative is almost on the same line. Okay, so we need to make a little bit difference. So we are going to take the attribute mass to add our arc with a tiny value, so that to make to make that distinguish. Actually, does not change. Yes, it does make kind of effect. It's just a very low. And more importantly, we're going to multiply this arc. If it's, it does have amplitude, but its amplitude is not much, then we can exaggerate that just by applying the whatever. So we do not need this too much. So now we have fixed everything. So you make a tiny offset and then everything is basically doable. You just uh, increase, increase amplitude if you want. So we have everything is being finished. And just to know that you have this to finally control, you, you have multiple kind of controls over whatever stuff. And more importantly, you take these angles. Just so to know this angle cannot be exceed uh, 180 degrees. But if you want to make sure that it really exceed 180 degree, you need to change the map range within here. Okay. So we take this. Uh, it's not very clear to see what's actually going on. Uh, so what we can actually also do is to take a, uh, I'm taking a vertex color within vertex color i'm going to change the view into vertex color and take the attributes color ramp take that to 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 uh, to attribute the color ramp arc as code then we can see the black and the white edges being created due to this mask okay so shading becomes even better just uh, to know there's a lot of parameters that you can potentially control and it makes things even better. 
but the DC is almost it. I, I don't know exactly why the, the plane is more exaggerated. Maybe because the amount of subdivision surfaces they do are allowed to actually play around. Because if you really add the uh, different subdivision surfaces, everything just being changed very much. But uh, is this really a fan that we're expecting? <laughs> I don't think so. I honestly don't think so. So try to just uh, keep that as one. Can I actually divide this one more time? For example, using 0 0.5 to divide. Ah, actually, I think it's not working. Anyway, I think this is... At last, just uh, briefly discussing UV. This is actually, so my method has definitely an issue that I'm already starting with a kind of curved surface. It's not a linear. So uh, while Irene seems to start with a linear cube, whatever stuff, and he stretched later. So the difference is that he can UV wrap very easily. I do not. I start with a single vertices, and when I create a single vertices, obviously it does not even create a UV map for me. There's also no way to unwrap, and especially it's screw modify is known to not create a UV, I guess. So basically UV is not working or whatever, whatever, whatever stuff. There are so many issues that you can actually encounter in this case. I was not taking this thing seriously anyway. So because I did everything within animation nodes originally, that I encountered a problem, but I solved that very easily. In this case, however, I do not have a concrete answer about how to solve that. I once thought the attribute transfer node, which lands in 3.0 will solve this issue. But the later I realized I tried, it does not really work in the way I want. So I, I think there's also other options that you can potentially do. Honestly, I think the last option is that basically you can attribute the feel or actually attribute the math or whatever stuff to feel the UV map manually by itself. It's not impossible because especially you provided the bonding box node that once you know the minimum and the maximum it's very possible that you define a 2d perspective of your mesh and then you can uv unwrap or whatever whatever stuff but in that case why don't you just try to use the generate that was generated it gets kind of a weird case the whole point is when you're trying to do this kind of stuff it does not go with you it does not go with this kind of generated checker you need a real UV so that everything works as expected. But uh, again, I don't really have a solution at this moment. I, I suppose you have ways, but I don't want to implement or investigate further. So if you have any ideas, please try yourself. If you you would like to share your method, I will be very welcome or whatever. But uh, this is today's tutorial. There's uh, something, other things that you can potentially play around, but uh, I will probably just uh, stop here. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial practice and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.